Okay, this is a tutorial on um, the different uh, armature visualization options uh, and bone display options you have in Blender. So here I have a dragon, um, and uh, this is a very early animation I did with him. So of course this is not going to be in any final product that I use, but um, here he is, and um, you can see he has the armature in there. You can kind of see little bits and pieces of it poking through, but you can't see the whole thing yet. Uh, so let me show you um, all the different um, options for this. Uh, first thing, under the um, if you have your armature selected, and then um, under your uh, editi editing tab, there's an armature uh, panel here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the bone x-ray so you can see the armature through the mesh. Okay. So there's your first thing is the bone x-ray. And uh, the next thing I want to show you is... Um, the uh, display under here there's this thing called display options and uh, what this is is like layers for the armature itself so as you know um, as you may know uh, up here are these little chips in in uh, the blender scene and these are layers so um, you can put objects onto different layers of your scene so that that way you can better organize your scene. You could, for, for example, the dragon is on layer one and the armature is on a different layer here. So um, if we don't want to see the dragon for some reason, we can just select just that one uh, layer and not see that. So uh, we have the same option down here for the armatures. So uh, you'll see here, if I select the first layer of the armature, uh, some of the bones disappear. The bones are still in the scene, but they're just on a different uh, armature display level. So if I select this second layer, that's where I put the bones at. Let me let me select one of the bones here and show you how it's done. Let's say this bone here uh, we don't want to see all the time. So when I select that bone, you'll see it here under armature bones, and then w this chip here, wherever I, I click on, that's the uh, armature layer it's going to be displayed on. So I'll just click on that, and you'll see, since we're only displaying that first layer, uh, it goes away and uh, if there were a bunch of different bones we didn't want to see at that time uh, we could for example if we want to just show the controls and not show this um, we can put all these bones onto different layer so there so now our display is not cluttered up at all we're able to see what's going on and not have to worry about those other bones in the way okay so that is a very useful option okay so uh, the next thing I will show you is the bone um, display options um, how the bones are drawn uh, octahedron is the default standard and it's like sort of like a ball and socket joint kind of display uh, the way you would display bones in a stop-motion puppet and it's fine for uh, you know, building your, your skeleton and stuff it shows you where the, uh, easily you can see where the joints are. Uh, the next option is stick, which as you can see is very nice for animators because of the fact that it takes up so little space in the display and you're able to see much more of what's going on and uh, it's, it's the most economical as far as actual um, taking up as much the display as the other bones. Um, the other one, B-Bone, is interesting in the sense that it is the only one that will let you um, uh, have these uh, segments here. So, you, for example, you can click on one, and then you'll see here that uh, when I increase the number of segments, you can see the actual mesh changing as I do that. Let's, let's select this one here. So you can see how the neck kind of straightened out there, and when I increased the number of segments to about four or so, how it became much more sinuous. So this um, B-Bone thing is, is perfect for, it's kind of like the Spline IK in Maya or some of the other programs. So as you can see, you can use this for uh, sinuous type stuff like necks and the tails, for example. Um, as you can see, the tails here because we have b-bone selected the tails have a much more kind of sinuous uh, kind of feel to them and we didn't have to really set anything up to do that it was very easy to set up because all I did was select b-bones and increase the number of uh, segments <clears throat> but you have to stay in this uh, b-bone mode in order to uh, get that um, it doesn't work in other modes and you can't 
I, I haven't found any way yet to mix and match them. So you can't have just the neck be in the B-bone mode. You have to have the whole armature be in that one mode at a time. Okay, so an envelope is uh, pretty much just useful for when you're waiting. So you can see here when you select it what the um, area of influence of the bone is going to be. Uh, it might be useful for when you're first weight painting your character and stuff. Um, but uh, for right now, I'll just leave it at the standard uh, modes. Probably octahedron stick and b-bone are going to be your, your best bets. Uh, the other things you can do is show uh, some information. The axes, uh, you can see the axis that the bones rotate on, which could be very useful if uh, your bones aren't uh, rotating in the way you want. Uh, you might turn on axes here, and then you might see maybe one of these axes is pointing way off in the weird direction. And even though you can't normally see it, uh, when you turn on axis, you can see that. Uh, the other thing is the names. You can see the names of each each bone, and that could be useful for uh, maybe selecting something or finding out what the name of that bone is. And uh, finally, colors, if you had things colored differently. But, um, okay, I'll turn all that off. Okay, so those are the basics of that. Um, now, the Visualizations tab also has some nice stuff on it, uh, especially if you're an animator. And so let's go through, get to about the middle of the um, animation here. And uh, you'll see the ghosting, uh, which a lot of you who do animation will understand. If I increase the number of frames to show the ghosting, you will see, If I, you can see it especially well here, when I do this overhead, you will see um, the dark outlines are the um, positions of all those bones on the previous and, and next frames. So you'll see the, the position of the bones in the past and in the future of the animation. So as you go through, you can find out if there's problems, you can find out you know where they are very easily by using this ghosting system. You can get an idea of the movement of the armature, not just on the frame it's on right now, but on the frames uh, in the past and future. And it's very easy. You just turn uh, the number of frames up and down until you get what you want. Uh, the other thing that's very useful is Calculate Path. So we'll select a bone here, and uh, we hit Calculate Path, and then you will see the path of that bone throughout the course of the animation. So uh, if you're animating the, the uh, arc of an object, is extremely important in determining how the animation looks. So you could, for example, you could do it for all these. You could calculate paths for every single bone here. And then you'll be able to see exactly what everything is doing, and you'll be able to look at and find any of the problem areas. Uh, also, you could select other objects. Those paths will stay there. If you wanted, for example, an object to intersect um, your character at some point, you will know that... Uh, it's going through that uh, that path there, and then when you don't want those, oops, uh, you can hit clear path, and that will get rid of that so that it doesn't clutter up your display. So as you can see here, Blender is full of uh, chock full of a lot of different options for um, displaying your armatures and uh, helping you out with your animation.